Hi. Hey, today I'm going to talk to you about how to solve radical equations. Um, and so let's, let's check out what that looks like. Um, first of all, with radical equations, the radical means that there's going to be some type of square root or cube root or some type of root. Um, because that's what radical, the radical sign is the square root sign. So um, we're going to solve equations which have those things in them. Now the thing about um, some roots is we need to be concerned with um, whether or not our answer that we get can be used. And so we, we need to check our answer with, with something that's called the domain. Now the domain is just the allowable values of, of x or d or whatever, whatever variable you have that you're allowed to use in the problem. So uh, I'm first of all going to solve that, look for that. Now in the square root, um, you can't have negative values underneath the square root because it makes no sense to have the square root of a negative number because square roots means that there's something squared that equals that value. So the um, first thing I'd want to do is check my domain and what I do is I take what's ever underneath the square root and I set it greater than or equal to zero because um, the values under there need to be zero or higher. And so if I do that, I set c minus 2 equal or greater than or equal to, to 0. If I solve this by adding 2 to both sides, I get c is going to be greater than or equal to 2. Now that means if I get an answer over here that is not greater than or equal to 2, then I can't use that value. And in this situation, um, I would have no solution or in that situation. Um, so let's see what happens here with this one. Now, the steps to, to solving uh, a radical equation is just get the radical by itself. And so right now in this problem, I have the square root of c minus 2 plus 4 equals 7. And this 4 right here is, is preventing us from having this thing by itself. And so I'm just going to subtract 4 from both sides. Now I would end up with c minus 2 on the left-hand side and positive 3 on the right hand side. So now I have what's up, what I like to call isolated. I've isolated the, the radical sign or the square root sign on the left hand side here. Um, now the way you get rid of a, of a square root is you do you square both sides or you raise both sides to the 2 power. So if I square the left hand side and I square the right hand side I end up with this expression c minus 2 is equal to 9. Now, from here, it's pretty simple. All I have to do is add 2 to both sides, and I would get c is equal to 11. Now, c is equal to 11 is what I got when I worked, it, worked this answer out, and I would check to make sure that 11 is greater than or equal to 2 from its domain, from my domain of the problem, and then I also want to check that by putting it back in here to make sure I have it right. So if I put 11 minus 2, I would get 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. And when I add 3 to this 4, I get 7. So that, that uh, checks out. So I know that uh, C being equal to 11 um, is in fact the solution. Uh, and, it, and so that's how you would solve... Um, a radical or this radical equation. Now sometimes radical equations are, un, are not solvable and so let me write an, an example of, of that. Now, if I, had any, if I had an equation like this, and um, I, I have the square root of x plus 2 plus 4 is equal to 1. Now, if I go through the steps that I did before, I'd want to check and see what my domain is, and I'd, see, I'd set x plus 2 greater than or equal to 0, and I would solve this by subtracting 2. And I would get a domain of x values got to be greater than negative 2. So that's my domain. Um, 
the way I'd go about solving this is I'd subtract the 4. And I'd end up with this expression. x plus 2 is equal to, 4's would go away there, 1 minus 4 is negative 3. Now, let's think about this answer. This says, I'm going to take the square root of something, and I'm going to get a negative value. Well, right there is a problem. There's no way that I could tag the square root of a number and get a negative value. Okay? So right now I know my answer is no solution. But let's just say I kind of didn't realize that. And I thought, okay, I'm just going to square both sides. Well, if I square both sides, I would get x plus 2 is equal to 9, because negative 3 squared is 9. If I go ahead and solve this, I would get x is equal to um, 7. And I would think, okay, 7 works out. All right, and if I check it here, 7 is greater than negative 2. So now I'm thinking, all right, 7 is my answer. However, if I plug it back into the original problem, and I put 7 in there. 7 plus 2 would give me 9. The square root of 9 is 3. And 3 plus 4 equals 1. Oh, wait a minute. 3 plus 4 does not equal 1. So 7 does not work in this problem. Um, as a matter of fact, I could have stopped right back there when I said it was no solution. Because 7 doesn't work. Okay? And so if you, run, if you run into a situation where your answer doesn't work, then at some point in time, you probably have a scenario that you have the square root equals a negative. When that occurs, you should write no solution, because there is no solution to this problem, because you can't have a square root be a negative. So um, I hope that this, uh, this helped you out, and um, I'm going to be posting a similar video or if you happen to have inequalities. So um, good luck with these.